We're so excited about what God is doing. Another facet of the ministry that God has given you and all of you work in is the film industry, as we alluded right. to earlier. And you recently have uh, you've done several films helping many other people in the mainstream market, but now in the faith-based arena for over over five years now. Correct, correct. But uh, tell us about your latest film, uh, De uh, Desconnection. Desconnection. Yes. Desconnection. Yeah. And, uh, and and you know what? Before we let you talk about it, I'm going to start with these young people. Okay, these young go, people. go, go, go. Johanan is is the youngest film. Uh, uh, producer in in Bolivia in in South in South America and pri and probably one of the youngest in the United States. Uh, just just amazing around the world, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And then as far as you as well, um, you know, Yassi Junior, a tremendous director. But tell us a little bit about the clip and what your role was involved in producing this movie. Well, um, this is a 17-minute uh, short movie that we did. It's, uh, the concept has to do with social responsibility. We're, we're, we, we like, one of the things that we do in our company, our vision, is to change people's minds and the way they think uh, through film and through art and through entertainment. And uh, this film is based on uh, the way people think in Bolivia and the mm -hmm. anti-values they have uh, over there and in Latin America in general and how they can change them and what these anti-values can actually cause in the society, the negative effect of these anti-values in the society. So we actually uh, designed the story. My dad wrote, it, wrote uh, he, he, he came up with the idea and we uh, developed the script through many years and a lot of work with a lot of people um, to create this short that has to do with uh, social responsibility and has a story that goes against these anti-values. So mm -hmm. um, that's what we did specifically with this uh, short. And my brother directed it. I did the direction of photography. Uh, my dad is the producer. Uh -huh. And um, well, it's our first short film. Uh, so uh, you can probably see the trailer. We're going to show it Yeah, in a we're going to show it in just a second here. So for, for you, you directed, right? Yeah, and, well. And how was your role on that, you see? The thing is, I had studied theater and film here in the United States. and uh, hmm. I, Where at? In Florida International University. Oh, FIU. Okay. Yes, FIU. And uh, we went back, I went back to Bolivia and we started getting into the filmmaking. And we, like you said, we worked in several, like, larger budget and small budget movies too. Uh, feature length, shorts, and all kinds of uh, projects. Until we finally, it's what, probably been around six years since I graduated, and we finally felt like it was the time to do something that was completely our own, and it was produced by us, directed by us, and everything, because uh, the other works we had done, the other projects were either co-productions or associate productions, you know? Mm -hmm. And this time we said, okay, we want to do something that's completely our own, but we want to do it uh, so that it has an entertainment value. Yeah. We don't want it to be preachy. We don't want people to be like, oh, here comes yeah. another one of those films, you know? Yeah. We want people to have a lot of fun while watching our movies, to be glad that they're paying to go to the movies, and to receive a wholesome message yeah. that is not always evangelistic, yeah. but it's about values. This one touches on values of honesty and how dishonesty can create like a chain reaction that can mm. be very harmful to us, our mm. society, and everybody. So uh, we have, I think, the trailer that yeah. uh, that's a one-minute trailer to our 17-minute movie mm. uh, because we wanted to do a movie that was nice and neat in 17 minutes so that mm. we could later reproduce that into a more, uh, you know, to a feature-length film. Feature-length film. Yeah. Well, uh, and you as the producer, we're about to see that clip, but I, I just love the fact that you're you're doing things to break the Christian bubble. You know, That's our true. media today tells us what to wear, who to vote for, right. you know, so many things. And so when you have the music platform, you have the film platform, and then you've authored books, you're you're infecting all the culture, not only in Bolivia right. but all of South America. And I, like I said, I believe you're going to to uh, invade America here. We're getting ready to see this clip, but anything you want to add as a yes, producer? Yes, one of the important things that we, we're trying to focus and we're trying to, to make uh, Christians understand is that we cannot be locked up in churches or locked up in places where we can live happily and there's a world out there. And yes. I think God has sent us out there to that world. Yeah. And we, what we did is after serving inside the church for many years, yeah. we came out of the church and we said, okay, we're gonna get into the real, real challenged yeah. world. And what, 
it, that was that was very difficult because you're accustomed to that beautiful life that you have inside the church. But then yeah. when you have to lead outside the church, you don't even yeah. know how to how to battle in the jungle. And yeah. this this jungle that where we're living right now has taught us many things. Taught us to be strong and powerful in the relation with God, with yeah. Jesus, because that's yeah. what's going to hold you out there. You know, it's not going to mm -hmm. hold you the pastor or the church or yeah. the religion or the service. It's going to hold you your relation with Jesus Christ. So that was the first thing, have a very, very strong relation with Jesus Christ. And another thing is that we didn't have to preach out there. We yeah. had to live like Jesus Christ taught us to live. Yeah. And what, what's happening right now is we're becoming to be the most famous filmmakers in Bolivia. We're making movies with message that nobody does that. Mm -hmm. and, and and Latin America is getting affected for what we're doing. Why? Because of the type of people we are. Not yeah. because of what we say, but, or, or but because of what we do. And it's not easy. It's difficult it, because there's also, you know, the standard. Uh -huh. You know, uh, when we are perhaps among us Christians or whatever, everybody's very loving and supportive of what you do. But when you step out into the arena, first of all, you got to be good at what you do because yeah. otherwise you're going to get trampled and left behind. That's right. Okay? And the standard sometimes is, is, is much better out there. So mm -hmm. you need to be understanding that you can learn a lot from people yeah. that we would call secular or from the world, yeah. you know, that uh -huh. we just kind of feel like, oh, you know, I don't want to be yeah. contaminated. And it's... It's really, there are great people out there and right. there are people that need God and they also can teach you many things and can be an inspiration to yeah. become better professionals in yeah. general. Yeah, amen. And you know, I love what you just said, Brother Yassid. I think, you know, the Bible calls us, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever yes. believes in Him. So if God loves the world, then we need to reach the world. We need to be salt and light. And I think that's the problem in general with exactly. Christian television in general, especially, is we seem like they're always behind the eight ball. The, the, they, they that's know what here I want to say. It's yeah. just like if we would make our movies just for Christians, yeah. the merit is, is okay, but it's not what the purpose that Jesus Christ has put in our hearts. Yeah. Uh, the purpose really is to affect the world from the social, political, uh, Economic. artistic, economic, yeah. every yes. area. We have to take it in our hands, but take it outside there, not take it inside the church. Like, like we did a, a documentary on reconciliation. And this documentary on reconciliation, people were telling us, the church was telling us, why don't we bring a Spanish guy from, from Spain that is Christian, and we put an Aymara or, or a native Bolivian, and they Christian, so they can ask for forgiveness each other, and then we have a reconciliation. We said no. We want a representation of a political uh, Spaniard that is not a Christian and a political uh, Quechua, 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 you know, original from Bolivia, and them in a serious in a serious relation through the embassy and through the government, them asking for forgiveness and make it very public. And, and that was hard to do it, but we did it and we have the documentary and we're going to be showing Praise. it in, 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 in the future. In the Praise future. God. Well, let's watch this trailer. We've got a few minutes and then we're going to come back right to you here in just a moment. Picture paints a thousand words. Por favor, solo dame un número, el de Ariel Maldonado. Well, there's a little taste of disconnection for my Latin brothers and sisters. I'm working on it, man. I'm yeah, working yeah, on it. Yeah, 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 definitely. It, now, Yassid, uh, it's amazing. You were kind of telling me how, you know, the cameras you shot this with were called the what now? The Red One cameras. Actually, we were able to shoot with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a really cutting-edge technology. Uh, which is being used in Hollywood right now. There's movies like uh, uh, Social Network, Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Yeah, um, there are man, many, many other Contagious. movies that are coming out right now. Contagion, for example, yeah. se uh, secular, like big, big budget movies were filmed with these cameras. And so we have a lot of the equipment that is being used in Hollywood and we can be at that standard. And so right. we're happy that we can 
do that and we can do it with a wholesome message. Awesome. Now, friends, it, it costs a lot of money to produce films with a spirit of excellence. I want to encourage you to go to their websites. Help support the vision that God has given them as they carry this mantle. God has given them the platform. They have the inroads. You know, a lot of times we talk about supporting world missions. Well, here's a golden opportunity because movies can infect the culture just like Courageous and other films have around the United States. That the light, to be salt and light, you have to go where they are. You have to speak the language of the lost without compromising your message. Uh, and so that's something that you all do through the mass media, through the music platform, through every facet. And another thing exactly. that you've done is you've auth also authored a book called Grace Correct. or Disgrace. Yasid Sr., so tell us about that book, why it was written, and what's your purpose with it. Okay, uh, as I went through the church, uh, different churches, I, I've been all the way from the Baptist, uh, I've been in the Pentecostal church, and many different churches. Different denominations. Right, denominations. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was writing through uh, my life, because I have a prophetic call, and yeah. I was writing everything that you know, uh, God was speaking to me through, through this journey. Mm -hmm. It took 10 years to write the book, and then after I, uh, I finished writing the book, I did a uh, uh, three month correction and the details mm -hmm. and then I published it two years ago in Spanish. Now I have it all translated to English and I'm going to be publishing it uh, hopefully here in the U.S. and all through the world. But the basic of this book, uh, uh, the motivation is I think what happens is that God has been speaking to me 15 years ago, uh, which I couldn't hear him very clearly in the beginning, but later I started listening to him uh, and understanding what he was trying to uh, say through me and uh, tell, telling me uh, of what was happening in the church. And the, 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 the book is based especially in having a spiritual life and having a religious life. Uh -huh. you, can, you can have an incredible religious life today but be very far away from Jesus Christ. There you go. And I think what's happening with the church, and that's what God's been speaking to me, is that the church is becoming every time more of a, of a religious uh, yes. institution and yeah. getting away farther from the reality of Christian life and Christian uh, spiritual life. Mm -hmm. So the book is based on my experience and, and what I've received through, uh, through my years of being a Christian and a prophet. And I wrote it down, and it's, it's very, very touching because the, the, the book is not especially written or specifically written for the church. It's written for everybody in the whole world. And many and thousands of people that have read my book in Spanish and that are not Christian, they've been really affected because it's not a preaching book. It's a book about relation, uh -huh. not religion, relation. Good, great. Well. You know, uh, friends, I just want to encourage you, we've only got about 40 seconds or so, uh, you know, to go to their website, find out more about them. If you're ever in Bolivia, get a hold of them. There's the uh -huh. website address. <laughs> Call me here at the Christian Television Network in Fort Myers, Florida. Those of you watching us on CTNI in Latin America and Europe, I just want to encourage you to spread the word about this wonderful uh, ministry that's making a difference. It's being a bridge to the unchurched arenas. Go be salt and light wherever God has planted you. And remember, according to Acts 3.19, that times are refreshing. They do truly come from the presence of the Lord. You go be that witness. Don't just be a Christian, but be a witness of Jesus Christ wherever He has planted you. God bless each one of you, this Thank wonderful you. family. And again, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Thank you very much. Bless Thank you for having me.